Today's video sponsor is GVG where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, it's Shitkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. And as for today's video, we're just gonna have a, a simple video of me talking and presenting presenting some facts about the RX 7900 XDX. And I, I'm not talking about the XT, I'm talking about the XDX version, which is actually one of the best performance per dollar cards that you can have, at least in terms of gaming, yes, because in terms of workloads, most workloads, professional workloads, the Nvidia cards just smoke the AMD ones out of the water. Completely, they they have no chance in, in, in things like Blender and so on, but there are some benchmarks where they are. They are actually very good and with the dual media engine, they actually encode and decode very, very well, actually faster than the RTX 1490. So yeah, there are good points, bad points. Now they have AV1 encoding and decoding and so on. But the point that I want to touch here is gaming performance. And people were kind of disappointed because well, AMD did say that it would be faster in rasterization than it was actually presented. And we do understand that drivers are very, very early. And I mean, I don't know as of now, but at least some months ago, like maybe one year ago, the, um, the software department at NVIDIA actually had more people working there than the whole AMD company, okay? Just for you to see how massive the software, the software department of NVIDIA is. So it is normal that they do things faster and still they have problems like any other company, okay? They're, they just have less, but they do have problems as well. As for AMD, we still need to, to go step by step, but drivers will certainly improve the performance. But now we do have a very important thing, which is overclocking. Now going straight to the facts after like two minutes of rambling and explaining, we have, um, we have the, the tech power up review of the XFX Radeon RX 7900 XTX Merc, and we have the review of the, um, yes, of the XTX Tough Edition from uh, Asus, okay? And what we can see here automatically and fast is that we get a very nice boost in uh, Yon Engine Evan. We actually have a boost from 360 FPS to 347 FPS, okay? It's a nice boost, it's not, a, it's not insane, it's 10%, it's the minimum that I actually presented, 10%, which is pretty acceptable. But as soon as we go to gaming, okay, at least with Cyberpunk 2077, the results are impressive as it is said here. And we actually go from the normal 60 FPS to 62.7 FPS with a tough edition. And as soon as we overclock it, we go to 69.2 FPS. So it is basically on par with the RTX 4090 in terms of rasterization performance in Cyberpunk. And that's great. I mean, it still consumes less than the 4090 and it has the same performance in Cyberpunk in terms of rasterization. I still think that Tech Power Up should have done uh, a way larger, a way larger gaming performance with uh, with the overclocking, but that's a thing that I'll do as soon as I get my card because my card will be here um, on the day after tomorrow, so on the 15th. Uh, and I will test stock overclocking results, under vaulting. Uh, how far can we go in terms of power draw reduction with the same performance and so on. But at least as you can see here, 4K Cyberpunk 2077, 69.2 FPS, while the RTX 4090 has 70 F FPS and this puts it 23.1% faster, 23.1 faster than the RTX 4080. And once again, you may tell me that, well, but it's overclocking, nobody will overclock, or at least only a few people will overclock, so it doesn't really matter. But it does, it does really matter. Think with me. Different cards, different models, and different generations have different overclocking potentials. For example, if we only test stock versus stock, the RX 5700 XT will be uh, on par with the 6600 XT at 1080p, for example. And although it consumes more power, it will be on par. But keep in mind that the 6600 XT can be overclocked easily, and I mean 
easily and it will still deliver 10 to 15% more performance than the 5700 XT. And you can say, well, just overclock the 5700 XT. Well, you can't, because the 5700 XT is already, they already smushed it uh, to the max performance available. So some cards are able to overclock a lot and others are not able to overclock at all. So if you only test stock results, it won't show the actual um, potential of the cards presented. And it actually annoys the, the hell out of me that big reviewers like Linus, big reviewers like Hardware Unboxed and big reviewers like Gamers Nexus don't actually show the overclocking results. I mean, they don't have to do all the games tested with overclocking, but they should at least, and I repeat at least, have a, a section with, let's say, three or four games. Um, Yes, a section of with three or four, or four games where they actually show the overclocking results. Okay, that would be a very good thing because it would show the full picture instead of just showing the picture that they want to show, or at least the easier picture. And the same happened like one year ago, where I was actually testing already with Smart Access Memory. I actually delivered, like I do now, uh, tests at stock, overclock, and Smart Access Memory as well, or resizable bar. Uh, and reviewers were not testing with Smart Access Memory enabled. Although Smart Access Memory did give a huge performance boost in some titles, and still reviewers weren't showing that performance. Once again, showing the full picture is very important, and um, just showing the, the stock results don't show you the full picture and can be misleading to a certain point. Um, and it actually annoys the hell out of me. For both Nvidia and AMD actually, for example, the 3060 gets almost no benefit from overclocking. But as soon as you overclock the 3070, it will get a very good performance uplift. So why not do it? You're just losing performance and you're not showing the full picture. Once again, annoys the hell out of me. And in terms of these results that we see on Cyberpunk 2077, we have 69.2 FPS which is basically on par um, with what AMD actually show us on Cyberpunk 2077, as you see here, up to 72 FPS. We have uh, 69 FPS, the 4090S 70, so it is more or less on par with AMD actually showed us, meaning that they weren't lying, they were just showing the... Um, that tweaked the results per se, so they weren't lying, they were misleading, that's for sure, they were misleading, but they weren't lying, so these cards can in fact, can in fact reach up to 70% uh, performance in rasterization, up to 70%, as you can see, the 6900 XT, for example, has 37 FPS, 37.3 FPS, while the overclocked 7900 XTX goes to 69.2, which is just very, very good, and once again on par with the RTX 4090. Another thing that people need to understand is that um, due to a, to a thing that AMD actually, actually improved hardware-sided on the RDNA 3 cards, okay, which is the multi-draw indirect accelerator, the MDIA, Reduce CPU API and driver overhead by accelerating gathering and parsing of multi-draw common data. Meaning that these GPUs, the 7000 series, actually improve the performance in CPU overhead scenarios because they reduce the, the CPU overhead uh, in terms of driver-wise via the, MD, uh, the MDIA, which is a very important thing as well. And as you can see, for example, at 1080p on the Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we have very interesting results with the 4080 doing 165 FPS and the, four, and the 4090 doing 185 FPS with the 7900 XTX doing 180 FPS. Now, put the overclocking settings on top of these 180 and we actually have more performance at 1080p on Assassin's Creed Valhalla than the 4090. Do the same at 1440p and we still have more performance than the 4090. Now, it is only at 4K that the, um, the 4090 maybe wins because it depends on how the overclocking scales on a, uh, on a civil Valhalla, but as you see, with the overclocking settings, if you put 10 to 15% more on top of this, 
it will win. It will win over the 4090 in rasterization while still consuming less power. Going for example for any other game, let's go to Control for example, which is a very uh, Nvidia sided benchmark. And still at 1080p, once again, due to the reduced overhead in the drivers, we have very close results to the 4080, which is nice, but I guess we do run into a little bit of CPU bottleneck here. But as we go to 1440p, yes, it is fairly faster, not fairly faster, it is a bit faster than the, the 4080, while the 4090 is considerably, considerably faster, and the same happens at 4K. Okay, but this is a very, very Nvidia sided title. Okay, it's control. Now let's go, for example, to far to Cyberpunk once again. Okay, Cyberpunk once again at 1080p, nice results, can't say so, considerably higher than the 4080 without any kind of overclocking. At 1440p, the distance actually grows to 129, while the 4080 does 116. And at 4K, yes, we have the 62 that goes to 69 once overclocked. Let's see, for example, another game like Battlefield 5, which is a very CPU demanding game. Well, as you see in Battlefield, in Battlefield 5, which is a very CPU demanding game, like I told you before, we can see that the 7900 XTX actually performs better even better than the 4090. The 4090 delivers 329 FPS, while the 7900 XTX delivers 361 FPS, okay? Considerably higher than the 4090, and even the 7900, the 7900 XT delivers almost 20 average FPS, like 15, yes, 15 FPS over the 4090, so it is quite insane. And even as soon as we go to 1440p, we still have the both, uh, both the MD cards uh, performing very, very well, with a 7900 XT still performing better than the 4080 by 20 FPS, and the 7900 XTX performing considerably better than the 4090 as well. And, well, even at 4K, the performance difference is considerably uh, higher on the XTX versus the, the 4080. So, once again, very nice results in CPU-bound scenarios. Let's go, for example, to Dying Light. Let's see what we have in Dying Light. Once again, at 1080p and at 1440p, these cards are killers, okay? The performance difference is, is almost... I mean... It costs way, way less than the 4090, and yet it is really, really close. We're talking about a difference of maybe 10%, yes, around 10% difference from the, the Tough Edition without overclocking, okay? Uh, because if we do overclock it, it will basically be on par or maybe even better than the 4090 at 1080p, and the same applies at, at 1440p, so the results are just crazy good. Once again, at 4K is where the, the 4090 actually performs better, but once again, with the overclocking, maybe it reaches the 4090 results. If we look into 10%, 10 to 15% more like on Cyberpunk, yeah. And yes, I'm not, I'm not fanboying, it's simple maths, okay? That's, I mean, you can overclock the 4090 and you also get way better results, okay? But the performance, the power draw, I mean, the power draw will be insane, so... Yeah, it depends. On Far Cry 6, once again, Far Cry 6 is a very, very CPU demanding title. And at 1080p, once again, we have the 7900 XT, the cheapest card, once again performing better than the 1490, in this case by 13 FPS, which is around 6% in this case. As for 1440p, we still have the 7900 XTX performing better than the 1490, and at 4K, interestingly enough, even at 4K, it performs better than the 1490 by 5 average FPS. Let's see Elden Ring, maybe? Isn't this game capped? Maybe they unlocked the FPS. At 1080p, well, it's no surprise, in this title, the, the, the NVIDIA cards just perform much, much better. Even if we, if we put the overclocking with, let's say, 10%, 10% of this, 
we're talking about uh, 14 FPS more and it would still be on par with the 4080 only. But as soon as we go to 1440p and we put 13 FPS more here, it will surpass the 4080. At 4K, it will definitely surpass the 4080 as well, but it will still be behind the 4090. Let's see another game. Let's see, for example, Red Dead Redemption, for example. Okay, Red Dead Redemption also works very well uh, CPU-sided for higher FPS numbers. And as we can see once again, 1080p, the MD cards completely own even the 4090. And even at 1440p and 173 FPS, the 4090 loses, barely loses to the, to the XTX version. And if we overclock once again, the difference is even bigger. And even at 4K, yes, it performs better than the 4090. Once again, it's like the third or the fourth title where it actually performs better than the 4090 at 4K. So what do you have to say now? As for power consumption, I will also show the full picture because the power consumption in terms of idle, it is pretty okay. Okay, from eight watts, on the 6800 for example or 7 watts on the 6900 XT to 12 watts or 13 watts but it, it is quite normal since these GPUs have way more physical units and it is only on the multi-monitor or the video playback that the consumption goes off goes completely off um, and blows the roof uh, and that's a bug okay that's a bug don't worry because this is not linear this is just a bug and the AMD actually acknowledged this on the first drivers that they released for the 7000 series cards and they have high idle power as situationally been observed when using select high resolution and high refresh rate displays okay in terms of gaming uh gaming power consumption yes it is still behind the 4090 but i do have to tell you that the 4080 is an outstanding card, not in price, but in terms of performance per watt, the 4080 is an outstanding GPU. I can't stress this enough, okay? The 7900 XTX is an amazing GPU performance per dollar, but in terms of power draw, well, the 4080 is an outstanding GPU. And I will actually try to reduce the power draw from 350 to 300 watts as soon as I get my card in order to see how much performance I will get at 300 watts with undervolting because that's one of the things that people will look into as well. And I don't, I don't really like to have uh, GPUs consuming much more than, let's say 300 watts, 250, 300 watts. So I will try to do the undervolting and see what I can get. So well guys, that's all for today's video and it was already a long one where I actually showed you some results showing you that, I mean, the 4090 can actually be matched or beaten by the 7900 XTX at 1080p and 1440p and in some scenarios even at 4K, the AMD cards will actually perform better than the 4090 while consuming less power. And with the overclockability of 10, from 10 to 15% more performance, it will definitely beat it in most 4K titles when tweaked. And like I told you before, overclocking is important because showing the full picture and the full potential of all the cards is important. Showing just stock results might be misleading in some scenarios. So, I mean, it is what it is. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the performance of these GPUs and with this data that you just saw, if you are actually considering buying one or going to the Nvidia side. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.